Yes, a lot of respect for this flag. Right here, another one. This story involves a true cowboy. Hello everybody, Isaac Corazzi. I am the B-Man, the B-Man to the stars. If you've watched my videos, you see how busy we are. I decided four or five months ago that I'm going to start entertaining the public. I am one of the luckiest people you have ever seen in your life. I was at the right place, at the right moment, many, many times in my life. And I would love to share the stories with you. The story I'm going to share with you today involves two movie actors, James Arness and his brother Peter Graves, and their father. We used to call him Gramps Arness. Gramps Arness was an older gentleman and he had become come to United States from Switzerland or somewhere in that area, came to America and both of his sons became famous. James Arness as Marshall Dillon on Gunsmoke and Peter Graves on Mission Impossible, the old ones. And for many, many years these guys entertained us. You know, I was a kid at that time and I didn't realize what legends I am hanging around with. And yes, I was there. I'm going to tell you more. I saw a lot of things. I'm going to share it with you through my videos. The story today is about Gramps Arness. Gramps Arness was an older gentleman, as I told you, and he was a very, very proud man. He had a deep voice, just like his son, James Arness. Listen. Now, Judge, I want you to hear me out, and I want you to listen carefully to what I say. Pruitt Dover's not the kind of man who could kill anybody in cold blood, drunk or sober. Any man who'd offer his life for another one the way he did for me is incapable of killing intentionally, any more than he could have left me out on that prairie to die. Yes, they had in their family they had that deep voice with the gusto and again they entertained us for many years when I was 15 16 years old I attended a summer camp uh, whereas uh, I ran the horseback riding program we had 40 horses we took kids on horseback rides and there were a couple of my friends that worked with me we would saddle up these horses take the kids on horseback rides at Brandeis camp by the way hello all the Brandeisers I know you guys watch my videos I've received texts from you thank you uh, so Gramps Arnaz uh, was living at the James Arness ranch and James Arness in the early 70s because he owed a lot of money in uh, taxes to uh, this flag which I owe a lot to this flag uh, he decided he's gonna donate his ranch which was 1500 acres and they used to run 500 head of cattle on this ranch and these were all beef cattle and later on they became steaks and uh, hamburgers on your plate at home so they used to do that and the, uh, uh, the father Gramps Arness lived on the ranch until he passed away uh, almost 90 years old Gramps Arness, again, was a very proud man, and we would see him walking his dog, Maggie, all the time. Just try to picture an older gentleman who loved life. He had reason to love life because both of his kids were like gods. They were so big. And uh, he would walk that dog for half a mile slowly slowly and when he would see us we were ordered we were told by my boss uh, Johnny Varble that when you see them don't bother them now don't forget I was 15 16 years old 
when we would see Gramps or Ness, we would walk up to him and say, Gramps, how are you? What's going on? And he always wanted to tell you a story about how proud he was of uh, his kids. And rightly so. Just take a look at who these people were. Super humans. That's what they were. And uh, I would tell him, uh, Gramps, tell us. Now, I'd heard this story about 10 times. And he was so proud that we didn't want to burst his bubble. We would say, Gramps, tell us this story. Now, one of his favorite stories was, did I ever tell you what the first movie Jim started in was? And now, again, we had heard this story 10 times, but we would say, tell us, Gramps, tell us. He would say, Jim starred in the movie The Thing, and Jim was The Thing. And on opening day, I went to a movie theater, and I was watching the movie, and the minute Jim jumped out of that black goo, I don't know what it was, but some kind of goo, he jumps out. He says, I yelled out, that's my son. And the ushers threw me out of the movie theater thinking I am crazy. So he was fantastic in telling stories and we loved listening to his stories. His sons, uh, Peter Graves and James Arness would come onto the property to visit their father. I saw James Arness maybe eight times, nine times, and again, we were ordered by my boss, Johnny Varbo, uh, who used to work. He was the ranch manager for 20, 25 years for James Arness. He's the one that ran the cattle. He would take them to auction. He would buy cattle. I mean, unbelievable world I was living in. And uh, they would come on to the ranch. I saw uh, James Arnett seven, eight times, no, eight, nine times. And I saw uh, Peter Graves only like three times. Uh, and, you know, they would walk onto the ranch just like any normal person. And again, we would wave at them. We never socialized with them because we were warned by my boss, these are movie stars. Don't approach them. Don't ask them for an autograph. Don't bother them. And we never did. Graham Sarnes again had that dog, Maggie, the most lovable dog. And it, it made me feel so good to watch Gramps uh, socialize with this dog. That dog did not live uh, a lot uh, longer than uh, when there was a fire at the ranch. You see, Graham Sarnes had a beautiful patch of grass in his backyard, uh, whereas it was cool to the rattlesnakes. And the rattlesnakes during the summer would come down and Gramps Arness's dog, Maggie, was one of, uh, it was an older dog and she went to sniff one of these rattlesnakes and the rattlesnake bit him on the face, bit her rather, on the face and uh, the dog passed away. It was an era, it was an era of movie stars, uh, I mean, it was beyond belief what went on on that ranch. So the ranch was donated and I worked there for about three years and uh, I got the honor of meeting Gramps Arness and uh, again, the dog got died and the fires came to his house. I grabbed his dog during the fires, took the dog to a safe place on a leash so that when he came back, Gramps came uh, and, and got his dog. I honor such a, uh, people. I thank God every day for have had the opportunity to uh, meet these people, cross paths with them, it was unbelievable, and again, at that time, I didn't realize how important these people are. This is exactly why I dedicate this video to Gramps Arness, James Arness's father, Marshall Dillon on Gunsmoke. I'll see you at the next video.